this is enough to get on your feet and give God some praise. Because somebody didn't make it. Amen? Hey!
brand new year, but a brand new month. Hallelujah, the second month of a brand new year. Hallelujah. 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 Come on and give God some praise. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised on today. Hallelujah. I give God all glory and honor for what he has done for me. I give him all glory and honor for what he has done for you. Hallelujah. Because if it wasn't for him, if it wasn't for Mary's baby, the rose of Sharon, hallelujah, the wheel in the middle of a wheel, that battle axe, hallelujah, that tower of refuge, the prince of peace, the Lord of lords, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Hallelujah. If it wasn't for Jesus, where would we be on today? Hallelujah. Truly, I just want to welcome everyone this morning. Amen. I welcome you to the city of joy. Amen. I welcome you to praise God. I welcome you to lift your hands. I welcome you to run around. Hallelujah. Give God whatever you have to give him. Because whatever you need, I know God's got it. Hallelujah. He got it for me, and I know he got it for you. Hallelujah. On behalf of our pastor and our leading lady in the city of Joy Nation, I welcome you. Amen. We are a church that believes in evangelizing the sinner. We believe in equipping the saints. This is a church of love, a church of peace, a church, a church of health, a church of prosperity. And we welcome you on today. Go to our chat box, amen, and give us your name and tell us where you are from. And let us know the mighty member that welcomed you and invited you to come and be with us on today. Go to our website. Check out our website. Give us your information so we can keep in touch with you and, we, and you can keep in touch with us. Our website is thecityofjoygm.org, cityofjoygm.org. Go and welcome, we welcome you in Jesus' name. Family. COJ Connect Church, it is offering time. It is time to honor God with our tithe and with our offering. Remember, there are three ways you can give here at the City of Joy. You can give via Cash App, that's City of Joy Baptist. You can also give via Givelify by searching City of Joy Baptist Church in the Givelify app. And you can also give via P.O. Box. That's City of Joy Baptist Church, P.O. Box 250, Clinton, Maryland. And while you're getting that information together, let's prepare our hearts and minds for our tithe and declaration. As an act of faith, love, gratitude, and a heart for the house, we bring our tithe and offering from our house and release it into yours. Because I am a generous and consistent giver, the fear of lack has been broken and has no power over me. As I give today, I'm believing for health and healing, jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, bills paid off, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, and finding money. Thank you, God, for watching over your word to perform it in my life, my family, and my money. You have blessed me to be a blessing, and I have more than enough to give so that your vision and purpose for this house may be fulfilled. Amen. Let's bless those seeds as they go into the ground. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give. We thank you for all that you've blessed us with and all that you've blessed our hands to receive and to hold. Father, in this moment, as we come surrendering our tithe and our offering unto you, we pray and ask God that you would bless it. And Father, as we move in an act of faith and in obedience to your word, we stand in anticipation of what this seed, what this offering, what this tithe and offering will unlock. Thank you for the opportunity to give. Thank you for all the blessings that you've bestowed upon us. And we pray and ask God that you will continue to use it to, to advance and build up your kingdom. And it's in Jesus' mighty name we do pray. Amen and amen. COJ Connect Church, thank you for your giving. And we pray that the Lord blesses you richly in the days, weeks, months, and years to come. If he would guide us into his matchless his revelatory expression we call the Word of God.
your word. Can you help us in the sanctuary real softly? Help us, lead us, guide us as we go. Your word, lift your voice as a heavenly ensemble. Oh, heaven, Lord, lead us. Won't you guide us as we go into your word? If you have your Bibles, St. Matthew chapter 17. Verse number 20, I do want to share with you at the beginning, you're going to need your word through this whole service. Um, you're going to need your pad, you're going to need your pen, you're going to need to write down some notes. And I'm challenging you as we are in this series called Faith Alive to go through the verses this week, uh, to go through the scriptures, to get it deep down in your spirit so God can do what he's desiring to do through the word of God. Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. And then I want to ask that you go to Mark chapter 11, verse 20. And we're in the Amplified. And we do want to thank those of you who purchased the Amplified. You download the Amplified. Hear thee the word of the Lord. St. Matthew 17, 20. He answered, because of your little faith, your lack of trust, and confidence in the power of God. For I assure you and most solemnly say to you, if you have living faith, somebody say living faith, the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and if it is God's will, it will move. And nothing and nothing, and nothing will be impossible for you. Flip over real quickly to Mark 11, verse 20. It says, in the morning as they were passing by, the disciples saw that the fig tree had withered away from the roots up. In the morning, as they passed by, the disciples saw that the fig tree had withered away from the roots up. I'm in this series, Faith Alive. This is part two. And if you'll give me permission in the latitude, I want to tag it, Speak to Your Mountain. Speak to Your Mountain. Father God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy, but most of all, we thank you for Jesus being our shepherd and our covering. As your people go into your word to receive your truth, your principles, loose your anointing through angels, let it reveal revelatory understanding to us that our lives will never be the same as a result of your word. Father, I pray least of all that you move me entirely out the way, use my voice, my mind, to share with the people what you shared with me through your word, that we may see your word move in our ministries, our families, our careers, our professions, all to give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise, for this is your work. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, Oh Lord, you are my strength, and you shall forever and ever and always ever be our Redeemer. In Jesus' name, somebody shout amen. amen. Be seated in the presence of God, both in the pew and at home. Ladies and gentlemen, can I begin by sharing that a 12-year-old boy became a Christian during a revival during the week. The next week at school, his friends questioned him about his experience. They asked him, did he see a vision? 
He said, no, I did not see a vision when I met God. They asked him, did God speak to him? He said, no, God did not speak to me. They said, well, how do you know that you're saved? The boy thought about it for a minute. And he said, it is similar to catching a fish. That when I go fishing and I put the line in the water, I don't hear the fish. I don't even see the fish. But when I'm holding the reel, I feel something tugging on the other end. And during the week, I felt God tugging me in that service to come into a closer relationship with him. And as it is with the boy, so it is with us. When you are saved, when you are connected with God, you should start to feel the tug of God wanting to be closer with you this month than he was with you last month. 2022, you ought to feel the tug from God to want to be closer to you this year than he was on last year. If you're in a new relationship, you ought to want God to be closer to you in the new relationship than he happened to be in the old relationship. And can I share with you, when you start to understand this tug from God, one of the things you understand is that believers struggle when we have to go through a storm. When a believer has to go through a dilemma, many times a believer will struggle. Whenever we're introduced to circumstances that is unfriendly to our faith, we will always go into a struggle. And, and when we have to deal with what I like to call rough seasons of life, we go into a struggle. But can I share with you, ladies and gentlemen, as we're entering into this, this new season, this, this new season of 2022, I want you to change your perspective over some things. I want you to change how you look at some things. I want you to stop dreading about going into a new season. I want you to stop dreading about dealing with a rough season. I want you to stop dreading about going through something that's unfriendly to your faith. And I want you to start thinking about what glory you bring to God when you come out. I want you to start thinking about how you will honor God when you come out of your present circumstances. Can, can you imagine what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego must have enjoyed when they stepped out of the furnace? Nobody looked at them the same when they came out. Can you imagine what honor Daniel had when he stepped out of the lion's den? An honor that he did not have before he was thrown in. Can you imagine the beauty of what Peter never was able to get away from because he had a moment in his life where he trusted God like he never trusted him before so that he could do something that no human had done before which was walk on the water. I think it's important for you to stop looking at what you're going in and if you have this, what we're talking about today, this faith, you gotta start seeing that there will be a level of glory that you bring to the kingdom of God, to ministry across the world, no matter what you're dealing with, there will be a glory and a honor when you come out of what you're going through. It's important to understand, ladies and gentlemen, you coming out of a dilemma, you coming out of a rough season, you coming out of unfriendly circumstances, it is all tied, catch this, to your faith. Somebody say faith. 
It is all tied to your faith. It is, it is so intrinsically tied that you can't come out of your storm without faith. You can't get through your rough season without faith. And I want to share with you as we are locked and lodged into this teaching, nothing works without faith. There's no salvation without faith. Victory is impossible in your life, in my life, if you're not operating in faith. Nothing is possible without faith. You got a pen, let, let, let me give you this. We're not ready for points yet. But faith is the producer of good reports. If you read uh, Hebrews chapter 11, we call it the Faith Hall of Fame. We have individuals of individuals who made it into uh, Hebrews chapter 11. All of them went through rough circumstances, but they're listed in Hebrews with a good report. The good report is directly related to their faith in God. Faith is the determining factor of every man's status. Are you operating in faith or not? Is that woman operating in faith or is she not? Turn to Hebrews chapter 11. Glory to God. Hebrews chapter 11, I'm in the Amplified, verse 32. It says, and what more shall I say? For time will fail me if I tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets. Verse 33. Who by faith, highlight that if you got your pen, highlight it. That is, with an enduring trust in God and his promises. Faith is an enduring trust in God and his promises. They subdued kingdoms. Listen to what happens as a result of faith. Administered justice, obtained promised blessings, even closed the mouths of lions. Now what I want you to see from here, and we're going to go to verse 34, faith is not faith if it starts and stops. I said it in part one last week, and I'll say it again. Many of us only use faith to solve problems. I'm going through issues, so now I believe God. I'm having problems at home, now I got to pray. Um, I, I got a bad news at my job, so now I got to run, I got to fast, I got to get on my knees. I'm doing all of this, and so your faith is not a lifestyle. Your faith is always a response to a crisis. So when your faith is a start and stop faith, you won't see manifestation the way God desires because you turn faith on and off like you turn the water. I wish I had some real people. Now this is going to bless your life if you get this, that, that faith is not something to turn on and off. Faith is something that has to become a part of my everyday my every week, my every month, my every year lifestyle. Are you with me? So stop using faith as a response to a problem and start living a life of consistent faith. Look at verse 34 in the same chapter. Extinguish this what faith has done. Extinguish the power of raging fire. Escape the edge of the sword. Out of the weakness we're made strong. That's what faith will do. Became mighty and unbeatable in battle. Did you read that? That means when you have faith, guess what the devil don't want you to know? It's only when you have faith you are unbeatable. Nothing, nobody, no spirit, no opposition can beat you when you operate in faith. I don't know who I'm talking. Maybe I'm talking to somebody on Facebook and you too. You need to get this word that you cannot be beaten when you operate and live a life of faith. Nothing works, watch this, in the kingdom of God outside of faith. Somebody shout, nothing works. It takes faith to get the resu any result that you desire in the kingdom of God, you can only get it through faith. Now, let me tell you what happened. 
Many times we try to do things without faith. The Bible says in Romans 10, 17, now faith cometh by hearing and by hearing what? The word of God. So the more that I get in God's word, the more that I read the word of God, the more I listen to the messages of God, God does something down on the inside of you that you can't get from a school or a classroom. He starts to ignite, to multiply the faith that is on the inside of you. Are you listening to me? So what we have a lot of are people who give God mental assent of faith, but not real faith. That means you hear people say, uh, when the word of God comes, Reverend Dawson, uh, oh yeah, that, that's right. Uh, 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 yeah, that sound right. Oh yeah, I hear that. Oh yeah, that's right. Say it, preacher. Oh, teacher, you teaching, say it, teacher. Now, now, that's mental ascent. In order for this to convert to real faith, there must become a contingent action based upon what you heard because, Lord, help me, Jesus. Faith without works is dead. Now, you got to get this from going back to part one. You got to get, get part one. But let me tell you, faith without works is dead. Faith is not nothing that can originate in your flesh. Faith originates in the spirit. So if you're going to understand faith, you got to understand, first of all, that you and I live in two worlds. One world is physical. The other world is spiritual. The spirit lives in you, which is God's connection. The physical is what you had when your daddy and mama, your grandmama and your granddaddy, your uncle and your aunt came together. So faith is not emanated through your hands or your feet, it's emanated through your spirit. The works come through your flesh because it takes your flesh to act on what your spirit receives. So your spirit without connecting to your flesh, watch this, will always equal something dead because nothing will ever come to pass if all you give the word is mental assent. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that, that sounds good. That's, that's the word. That, that's truth. Oh, yeah, that's right, preacher. That's right, teacher. Well, you will never fulfill the will of God if all you do with the word of God is give your mental assent. Are you listening to me? You have to allow the word that God gives and have to be acted out. Can I, let me go deeper. The Bible says in Romans 10.10, 10, don't, don't, don't turn there. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made to salvation. So my spirit has to believe in God. Then my mouth has to come in agreement with what I believe. Now I leave the state from being a sinner. Now I'm saved and sanctified. But if all my mouth do is say I believe in Jesus, are you feeling me? But nothing happens with my spirit or my heart. I will still be a sinner though my mouth said the right stuff. And many times in the believing community, we say the right stuff. But our heart or our spirit, that's the two worlds, faith without works, the spiritual plus the works, the physical must come together. You're going to get this in a minute. So faith is an act motivated by the word of God. You're taking notes, write that down. Faith is an act motivated by the word of God. It's not just you speaking, but it's an act motivated by the word of God. Let me give you a definition that I love for faith. Faith is defined as a living force drawn from the living word for living proof. Glory to God. I'm preaching better than y'all talking. Faith is the living force drawn from the living word for living proof. If you have faith and there's no proof, something's wrong. If you believe in God, then there ought to be some proof sometime that you're believing God because if it's aligned with the will of God, then we ought to see something sometime. Are you with me? 
Jesus says in John 10, 37, don't turn there. He says, if I do not the works of my father, don't believe me. Jesus says, the works that I'm doing, if I'm not doing it because my father has given, I give you permission to don't even believe in me. Why? Because I pride my life, I'm talking what Jesus says, in being in alignment with my daddy's will. So his will, his presence, his plan, watch this, becomes my preference. So what he's sharing with us as believers through faith is that as believers, we must do things in alignment with the word of God. Are you with me? So you say, Pastor, how can I know the will of God? I want to do right this year. I need this faith. How do I know the will of God? Well, let me tell you the simple way of knowing the will of God. God's word is his will. And God's will is his word. So if you're not getting in his will, it's a problem, and you're not getting in his word, it's clear you don't know his will. Because every day you ought to want to get in God's word because he exposes his will because his will is his word and his word is his will. Who am I teaching right now? And so in the word, his agenda is there for your life and for my life. So now I'm understanding this faith thing. Watch this. And we're getting ready to get to the speak of the mountain, but you got to understand the foundation. That now I understand when I get the word of God, my faith is not just giving mental assent. I have to do something in order to produce the results from faith. You remember the story with John chapter 2 when the Bible says that Jesus did his first miracle in Cana of Galilee uh, at the wedding. The Bible says when he shows up to the wedding, uh, his mother tells them, listen, my boy is, is God's son in flesh, but whatever he tells you to do, go ahead and do it. Jesus tells the, the waiters explicitly, all I want you to do is take the water pots, fill it up with water. They did exactly what he said to do. I'm going to say it one more time. He told them to go fill up the water pots with water. They did exactly what he told them to do. When they did what he told them to do, the Bible says water became wine. So the challenge for you and I, ladies and gentlemen, is that whatever God tells you to do, you got to do it because faith is not only in the hearing, faith is in the doing. You're in church right now getting the hearing part. But if you get the hearing part and there's no doing part, there's no manifestation. If you get the hearing part until you die and you don't do none of the doing, you'll never reap the harvest. If God tells you that situation going on in your, in your house, don't worry, pray about it. All you've been doing is worrying about it. Now you wonder why God ain't showed up. Because God spoke your word and you heard it. You said, that's right, God. You're right, God. I'm going to do it, God. But time you go back into the house, you're worrying like you were two months ago. Are y'all listening to me in here? If God has told you, watch this, he's going to make your enemies your footstool. What are you fighting your enemies for? What are you talking about your enemies for? You don't have to do nothing because God told you what he was going to do. All you have to do is be faithful. All you have to do is love God. All you have to do is give God the best that you have. Where is your faith? You heard what he said, but faith is also in the doing. Look at somebody and tell them faith is in the doing. He told you, watch this, to pray for those that despitefully use you. Why are you on the phone gossiping about people? 
Why you, why you texting people negative about other people? Why you on Facebook blasting folk when he told you just pray for them? Pray for the people who say, oh, I feel like I'm in the house right now. Pray for those who say all manners of evil against you. I'm working it out, but all I need you to do, stop getting involved. I need you a part of the doing of faith. Don't worry about them, just pray for them. If that's for you, you better receive your word because you're holding up your harvest. You're holding up your family blessing. You're holding up your miracle. You're holding up your promotion because you won't do what God has told you to do. You heard him say it, but you did what you. You in pain right now because you're holding on the past hurts. And he said, forgive those who trespass against you. And you still holding it. Why do you think you're so miserable inside? Why do you think you got inner turmoil going on? Because you heard what God said, but you did what you wanted to do. That is not faith. Faith is not mental assent. Faith is in the doing. It's one thing to believe it in the spirit, but your physical got to do what God has said in order for you to get the harvest. So, so there is, and you need to write this down, there is no evidence of faith without an act. There's no evidence out uh, 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 of faith without an act. Action is the authentic evidence of faith. If you have a lot of mental assent and no action, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but I want to be truthful. Your faith is fake. No act, you talk a good game. But you're not having no action to correlate with God has spoken. So when you refuse to move by the word of God, faith is not in action in your life. He says, so when I do something in your life, I need to see an action. Somebody shout action. If I tell you by my stripes, you're healed. Stop looking sick. I wish I had 20 people to talk to me up in here. If I spoke a word of healing, I know what the doctor said, but my word is greater than your earthly physician. My word is stronger than what you feel at the moment. But I gave you healing, but you still walking around talking sick looking sick. Nobody have to ask you because you look like you're sick but God said I put healing in place for you. When I went to Calvary's cross watch this I carried your pain but my struggle is not that I made Jesus carry your pain. My problem I'm trying to stop you from celebrating your pain. Because I gave you something and your actions don't line up to what I gave you. That's why I can't give it to you through the manifestation. Because your actions are contrary to what I've already given you. God says, if I delivered you, stop acting bound. When God sets you free from hindrances, Stuff that used to hold you back. Stuff that used to get you all focus. He says, at least if, if, if I've set you free from hindrances, stop hanging around hindrances. I went through all of that and finally got it to you. Set you free from the hindrances that held up your walk with God, held up your ministry, held up your growth with your family. At least when I do that, act like you're free. Don't go back and hang with the people. Watch this, because I just freed you from them. If you keep doing, watch this, opposite of what I've given you, that's why you keep having relapses. 
It's not that I don't have power. It's not that I didn't send my boy to the cross. It's not that you didn't say, God, that's true, I'm free. But your actions was contrary to what I've given you in the spirit. That's why you don't have harvest. That's why you don't have blessings. That's why the overflowing power of God is not falling in your life because you don't act like what God gave you. Who am I preaching to right now? God delivered you from years of depression, but you still look and act depressed. God delivered you from depression. Stop listening to blues. Stop listening to gospel music. Take off some of them dark clothes and start putting on some bright colors. Because you're not living where you used to. God is brightening up your life. He's brightening up your perspective. He's brightening up your future. So stop looking like who you used to be and start dressing like who you are now. So, so believers, so the lesson in our text today is Jesus did something to the fig tree. He spoke a pronouncement to the fig tree. Watch this. And when he spoke a pronouncement to the fig tree, he cursed it. He uses this moment as a theological platform to teach faith to the disciples. He says, you got to catch this first, write this word down, disciples. He's not talking to the world. He's not talking to the multitude. He's talking to disciples. You got to catch this. There's a difference between saved and unsaved. The disciples are people who simply responded to uh, Luke 9, 23. They've already responded to, uh, if you're coming after God, you have to first deny yourself. If I had somebody who loved the Bible. You have to pick up your cross. Uh -huh, uh -huh. This is a disciple. This is a disciple. So this is a person who's picked up their cross, but not only do they pick up their cross, they pay a cost. Because you can't follow Christ without picking up your cross and paying a cost. We have a generation of people who want to follow God, but they don't want to pay no cost. They don't want to sacrifice nothing. They don't want to get in the book. They don't want to fast. They don't want to pray. They don't want to get in the word. They don't want to change their lifestyle. They just want to shack with Jesus. But they don't want to get married to Jesus. They, they want to cohabitate with Jesus, but they, they, they want to always have the out clause in their side pocket. Who am I preaching to right now? They don't want the overwhelming commitment. They want to say, hey, if things don't go well, And so when we talk about the cost, if you read 923, write that down, Luke 923, in the Amplified Version, it says, individuals who express a willingness to endure whatever may come. If you can't respond to that, you're not a disciple. You're, you're a good time Christian. Now watch this. Let me dig deeper because I want to deal with this speaking to the mountain. Get your pen. Let me give you your first point. You're only getting two points today. The first point I want to share with you is that in order for you to speak to the mountain, you got to understand the force of faith. Write that down. The force of faith. Nothing in the world, watch this, can stop from answering to faith. Whether it's physical, spiritual, Mental, everything responds to faith. Economic problems, marital problems, job problems, family dis dis disintegration, untimely deaths, everything responds to faith. Go to Luke chapter 22. You got to get this. Lord, teach to us today. And this is why we must understand faith because I want to show you why you've You've fallen sometimes in 21, but I'm speaking it won't happen in 22 because you're going to get this word. <clears throat> Luke 22, verse 31. Amplified, it says, Behold, S Satan have desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. You see it? But I have prayed for thee that thy faith 
fail not. Highlight that. Notice he didn't say he prayed that your joy fail not. Notice he didn't pray, uh, Mother Smith, that your health fail not. He prayed that your what? Faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brother. Why is this important? Now, one of the things you need to understand, one, you understand what Jesus prays when he prays for you. Teach, Pastor. Because you think he's praying about something else. He's praying about the most important thing for your survival. If I had 20 people, just lift your hands. When he prays for you and I, he prays for the most important thing. So you and I are looking at the wrong stuff when we talk to God. I know we talk to God about the job. We talk to him about fortune. We talk to him about all of the things, stuff, and our names. But you got to understand, brothers and sisters, the devil in God looks at the same thing, but from different vantage points. Because they know the thing that keeps you going. They know the thing that keeps you on your feet. They know the thing that keeps you walking, breathing, and flowing. They know the real thing. So what is he saying in the text? He's saying in the text, I'm praying, watch this for Peter, that your, catch this, faith fail not. Write that down on your paper. Faith fail not. That's what I'm praying. Pastor, why is Jesus praying that the, my faith fail not? Let me tell you. Until your faith fails, you don't become a failure. Glory to God. I'm going to say it three more times because that went over your head. Until your faith fails, you're not a failure. I don't care if your job fails. Sweetie, I don't care if that good beauty you got right now, if that fails. Brother, you got the bronze, you got all these girlfriends, if that fails. I don't care if your good vehicles and your big name and all the zeros fail. Oh no, you ain't no failure. The only time you become a failure, watch this, is when your I believe, let me talk over here. The only time that God gets concerned with you is when your faith fails. You can lose all the money in the world, all the possessions in the world, all the material in the world. As long as you got faith, you're not a failure. Can I talk to somebody? The devil has been trying to tell you that you're a failure. But I decree and declare you've never failed as long as you keep your faith. You may have lost money, but keep your faith faith. You lost a marriage, but keep your faith. You lost some health, but keep your faith. You lost a job, but God, if you keep your faith, you will never be a failure. Look at somebody and say, you better keep your faith. So maybe this is why when the ruler of the synagogue in Mark chapter 5 verse 36 named Jairus came to Jesus with the issue, he looked back at Jairus and said, Jairus, don't fear, only believe. Because if you can maintain faith, you'll see the manifestation. I believe I'm preaching to about 500 people. Yes, you lost a lot. Yes, you've been through the valley. Yes, you've been up against some. But brother, don't lose your faith. Mother, please don't lose your faith. Sister, I don't care what you go through. You might lose some money in Dow Jones. But God says never ever on top of ever lose your faith. So, so tough times then are designed to make me part with my faith. Struggles are designed now to make me separate from my faith. See, this is what the devil didn't want y'all to get today. Oh God, when you run up into a problem, it's designed to make you stop believing in God and start complaining. Because once your actions are not in line with the spirit, there will be no manifestation. Every low life moment that I go through is designed to make me abandon my 
faith. Why? Because Hebrews 11 and 6 says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. And the devil don't want you to know, but I'm going to expose that no good, low down, dirty devil because I don't like him as much as he don't like me. Every time you let go of your faith, you don't please God. Every time you start doing what you want to do, you don't please God. Every time you handle it your way, other than what God says, you don't please God. If you don't please God, you don't get the harvest from God. And you always wonder when you get on the faith highway why you keep getting a ticket from the miracle police. <laughs> Saying you in violation because you talking right but you're not acting right and it ain't no way your God is going to do for you what you need until you line up because faith without works. So... So what does Jesus do? Catch this, get your pen. When Jesus speaks to the tree, he's sharing with us, ladies and gentlemen, we have to, if we have faith, start talking to things in the natural world. Start talking to your problems. I know you don't see it, but your problem got ears. Can I say that again? I know you don't see it, but your problem got ears. Cancer got ears. High blood pressure got ears. Depression got ears. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. The, oh, God, oppression got ears. So you got to learn to speak to natural things. Jesus looked at a tree and cursed a tree. But when you speak, you got to speak with boldness. Somebody shout boldness. You remember when Peter, Acts chapter 3, uh, Peter and John was going into the temple. There was a man laid daily at the gate of the temple. He, 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 he was always getting money, but money didn't solve his problem. When Peter stopped, watch this, Peter looked at him. When you read it carefully, Peter never prayed for him. I got to say that two more times. Peter didn't pray for this man. He spoke boldly under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost to this man's situation. This man who was lame got up because somebody spoke to his condition who was connected to Jesus and had faith in God. So that means when you speak to certain things in your life, don't speak wavering. You got to speak with the boldness of the Holy Ghost. By his stripes, I'm here. Don't say it wondering. Don't say it hesitating. Don't say it with no reserve. But when you speak to what's going on in your life, sometimes you got to lay hands on where it hurts and speak the word of God and don't waver but believe. And notice this before I give you my next point. When Jesus spoke to the tree, catch this, you got to get this. Something happened, but it didn't look like it happened. I'm trying to teach this thing, Reverend Dawson. Some have he spoke to the tree, curse, you'll never, you'll never, you'll, you'll never produce again. He goes into the city. Nothing happened. When they came out the city, the disciples said, wait a minute. You know that tree you curse is withering away. Now, wait a minute. When they saw it the first time he spoke, nothing happened. Jesus just kept walking. He spoke with power and authority. Watch this. But nothing happened. When he came back out of the city the next day, it was withering away. The disciples could see it when they saw it. But Jesus saw it when he spoke it. The disciples saw it when they saw it. But Jesus saw it when he spoke it. When you talk to something under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, you got to see that whatever you said has taken effect. And guess what your Bible says? When they came and saw it, they discovered, catch this, Lord have mercy. I want to pronounce a word over 600 believers who's getting ready to be blessed in ways you've never been blessed before. You need to get prepared to receive this word, oh God, that he's going to lay down in your spirit that will change 2022. When Jesus speaks to the tree, 
The reason you didn't see it, because the work started at the root. The work started, Mother Smith, at the root. The tree didn't start dying on the top. The tree started dying at the bottom. When Jesus deals with your situation, he goes to the cause. He goes to the source. You might not see it today, but I declare, if you speak a word, that thing is going to dry up. I want you to thank God whatever you need God to do. I want you to lift your hands and I want you to give God a praise. He's about to kill some stuff from the root, some stuff in your life, some stuff in your ministry, some stuff on your job, some stuff in your money. God is going to do it from the root. Looking at your mountain, start speaking to your mountain. Now catch this, I gotta get out of here, but you gotta get this. So from him talking to the fig tree, cursing it, it is from that example that he says this to the disciples. You have authority to speak to the mountains in your life the same way I spoke to the fig tree, you could speak to things that are standing tall in your life. And if you get faith, nothing will be in. I wish I had some real believers in this house. Grab your pen. Let me give you this. So, so we saw, first of all, the force of faith. I want to close on this point number two. This is all you're going to get is that you got to understand faith is a fight of faith. Fight of faith. Turn to Ephesians 6, 16. Glory be to the name of God. That's why the devil don't like you. Can I tell you, you about to become an unbeatable woman of God. An unbeatable man of God. Your, your, your relationship is about to become unbeatable. Singles, you about to become unbeatable. Nothing the devil can do can stop you because you gonna understand this faith thing. I know you've been in church a long time. I never preached it the way he's given me to preach it. I'm gonna preach it the exact way he's telling me to give it to you because the results in your life will be different. You're gonna see a manifestation so strong that the world has to stop and look because they gonna wanna know your story. Glory to God. Ephesians 6, 16. Above all, lift up the protective shield of faith. Highlight that. With which you can extinguish, Lord have mercy, all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Lift up the protective shield of faith. Highlight that. So now, your faith is not only something you need to please God, but it's also a shield from the arrows the devil got. I wish I had some real people in here. So when you don't have faith, that's why the devil beats you up all the time. So faith is needed to enter anything that God has packaged for your destiny. And what you haven't been taught, but you're going to be here today, your faith is a weapon of war. Your faith is not walking around being this passive woman of God, this passive man of God. Your faith is a weapon. Write that down. It's for fighting. Mm -hmm. That's why Timothy, 1 Timothy 6 and 12, just write it down, don't turn there. It says, fight, catch this, the good fight of faith. Why does it say fight the good fight? Couple reasons. The first reason it, it, it says fight the good fight because it, he really wants to let you know if you're in ministry in the kingdom, until you become a fighter, you don't become a winner. Glory to God. I know this is going to get in your spirit. Until you become a fighter, you don't become a winner. Faith is more than just for quotation. Or religious piety. It's a weapon for war. 
You need to write that down. Your, that's why your faith is so valuable. That's why the devil don't want you to study faith. He don't want you to hear faith message. He don't want you to get a faith teaching because he knows if you get that, you're going to back the devil out your house. You're going to back the devil out your mind. You're going to back the devil out of his attacks against your children. You're going to back the devil out of the attacks against your ministry because the word we see is the shield of faith which can detour the fiery dots from the enemy. Now notice what Timothy says, fight the good fight. Write down on your paper, good fight. Now, why do you think it's called the good fight and not the bad fight? He says, fight the good fight. Say good fight. You got to get this in your spirit. You got to get this in your spirit because this is one of the reasons many of you haven't fought. Because you think it's a bad fight. He says there's nothing bad about it. It's a good fight because you win. You're going to get this when you get home. He says fight. fight. You're not going to lose. You're going to win. But you got to fight to win. Can I do it again? He said you got to fight. Don't, don't just be there. Oh, the Lord going to work it out. He going to come through someday. He going to turn it around after a while. No, 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 no. He said you got to, you got to fight. And see, what happens is we don't fight. And because we don't fight, we make, help me Holy Spirit, we make angels cry. Tim, because we don't fight, we make Gabriel cry. We, we, that's right, but because we don't fight, we got Michael in heaven crying. Well, Pastor, what are they crying about? They're crying because your heavenly account is full. But when they look at how you're living on earth because you don't have faith, watch this, you're operating with a low account down here that you can only get through faith. So they say, why are they suffering when their father has prepared everything they need, but the only way they can get it, they got to please God. Who am I teaching right now? God don't have to create nothing for you. I said it in part one. God don't have to rush to nothing. He know everything you'll need for your whole life and he already provided it. He actually did it before you was born. Good God. Back on Calvary's cross, that's why Jesus says it is finished. That was more than about death, hell, and the grave. That was about restoring everything that Adam lost in the garden, that anybody who connects with God, they get dominion, they get authority, they get power, they get prestige, they get fellowship with God, they get peace that the world don't understand. And then he comes back and say, catch this. He says, and Jesus says this way, he said, listen, your account is so awesome. Watch this. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, your daddy will loose it up there to get it to your downstairs. The problem that you don't understand, you've been living out of one account. God gave you two accounts. <laughs> Help me, God. God says it's time for you to tie the accounts together. The reason why you're struggling, baby, you're living out one account. God says if you can tie the accounts together, you'll have everything that you need. Who am I talking to right now? Tie the two accounts together. Look at somebody say tie it together. If he got all the healing, why, why, why is your account down here filled with sickness? You got to tie into that account where healing overflows, where blessings overflow, where deliverance overflow. God got it Why you ain't getting it. Could it be you have given God mental assent to the word, but you're not providing action to activate what God has in store for believers? You are tither for years, giving to God faithfully. They say, oh, I'm going to get my blessing one day. I've been tithing for 20 years. I'm going to get God going to open my door. No. Guess what the problem is? You're not a fighter. You got to fight that devil. God got a blessing for you. You got to fight that every day. You got to plead the blood. 
Every day you got to say, devil, move out of my, I know a harvest is there. I know favor is on the way. You got to bind that devil. You got to become a fighter. You got to fight. I want to give you three weapons. I want to give you three weapons. I want to give you three weapons. When, when the devil comes at you, watch this. You got to understand you got a word weapon. Mm, mm, word weapon. Write that down. That's the word of God. The word of God is not just something you to read. It's a weapon. Repeat after me. The word of God is not just something I read. It's a weapon. So now I got, the, I got the word weapon, but then he also gives me the blood weapon. That's the blood of Jesus. So whenever the enemy comes at you, watch this, if the word don't work, throw the blood at it. I need me some real people somewhere in here. I need somebody on Facebook to talk to me. So you got to understand when you're going through, you got to plead the blood for your healing. Sometimes you got to plead it for your sanity. Sometimes you got to plead it for your peace. Sometimes you got to plead it for God to open the door. But if the word don't work, you got to learn to plead the blood. Somebody shout, I plead the blood. But can I tell you, if the blood don't work, you got to learn to use the weapon of the oil. The oil represents the Holy Spirit. So whenever the devil comes at you, you got to use the word weapon, the blood weapon, and the oil weapon. I'm talking to people, you about to get more stuff this year than you ever got before. Doors are getting ready to open, but you need to always pack the three weapons. The word weapon, the blood weapon, and the oil weapon. When you talking to that old devil at the house, always use the word weapon the blood weapon and the oil weapon. When something is going on with your grandchildren and your children, I want you to plead the word weapon, the blood weapon, and the oil weapon. Something going on, watch this, on your job, I want you to plead the word weapon, the blood weapon, and the oil weapon. You have to become a fighter with your faith, with your mouth, and have your actions lined up. Jesus said, I spoke it. Do I have to sit here and look at it? No, I'm going on in the city. Because in Jesus' mind, digging this riches, it was already done. The disciples didn't notice it until they came back. They said, look, Jesus, it's withering away. He didn't have to get excited because he know the power. Ooh, good God. And he comes back and said, the same way I did it here, when you run up to a mountain in your life, talk to the mountain. Matter of fact, stop telling people about your mountain. Start telling your mountain about your God. And when you tell your mountain about your God, your big mountain will start. Grab your Bible. Let me give you these two scriptures. I'm done. Are you getting something in here? Let me give you these two scriptures because I'm telling you, you're a fighter. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 2. Glory to God. I thank God for his word. He, look, look, the devil didn't want me to teach. That's why he acted up in the system today. He didn't want you to get this word. You're on another level. You got to know whenever you're getting a life-changing word and God is giving you something to change your trajectory for the future, the devil ain't going to sit back and cross his legs and let you get it. Deuteronomy 2, 31. It says, Amplify, the Lord said to me, I have begun to hand over to you Sihon, highlight that, and his land. Begin, take possession of it. Somebody say, take possession of it. So that you may possess his land. Well, the question you say is, Pastor, if this is my inheritance and God is making it a reality, why do I have to fight? If God is doing it for me, why do I have to fight? He says, no. Even when I give you something, I still want you to fight for it. Because I need you to stand ground in what I'm telling you to do 
even though it's already yours, because the only way you're going to come into it, this is a revelation for 1,000 people, YouTube, Facebook, around the world. Even though God has given it to you, you can't come into it without faith. So he can't just say walk into it. He has to tell you something to do that corresponds, teach pastor, with the action because faith without is dead. I wish I had a witness. He can provide blessings on blessings, but there will always be an action because faith is only ignited through an act, not just a talk. Deuteronomy 2, 24. Glory to God. This is your last verse. Glory to God. Listen to what it says. 2.24, Deuteronomy. Now arise, continue on, and go through the valley of Arnon. Look, I have handed over you, look what it say, to Sihon, the Morite, king of Heshbon, and his land. Listen to what he says again. Highlight this with your highlighter. Begin. Take possession of it. Fight with him in what? Battle. So now, God is giving the people of God something, but he says it's already yours, but you got to possess it by contending, not by debating, not by arguing. He says, I've given it to you, but I want you to know though I've given it, the king and the land will still resist. I got to say this again, because though the blessings for you is already laid up, something in the land or the spirit over the land will always resist you, though it's yours. Teach, pastor, though you're going to the next level, something in the next level that's already there is going to resist you coming in. Can I teach the real people? Though you're getting ready to get promoted, something is in the promotion that's waiting there to resist you. Nobody, everybody won't be sitting down with a birthday hat on when you show up. Somebody's going to be mad with their lips stuck out because God is taking you to the next level. So he says, expect scions to hang out in your inheritance. Listen, people of God, and I'm done. The way you know that God is getting ready to elevate you is that when you look up, you see Goliath. Goliath is not an insult. Goliath is a guard over the destiny gate. Because unless David go through Goliath, he don't make it to his next position. Unless you go through the thing that's standing up in front of you, you will not be that CEO. You will not start your own enterprise. You won't become that millionaire. Because whatever's in front of you, you already have permission from God but you got to go in fighting. I want to pronounce a new financial status over every person who's under this word. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Even at home, lift your hands. I want to pronounce a new season over every person under this word that you will not allow the scions that's over where you're going to stop you but you got to fight with faith oh God you got to contend for the promise you got to promise but you got to walk in this thing you got to no longer say it but you got to act like it you got to walk like you believe it God I decree and declare that the favor you're providing for your people this year this year of empowerment this this year of blessings, you're going to allow their heaven account to tie down with their earthly account. Everything they stand in need of, you're going to start to supply it because of their faith. No longer will we just talk it, but we're going to walk it. When the devil show up, we're going to apply the blood against the devil. When the devil show up, we're going to apply the word against the devil. When the devil show up, we're going to apply the oil against the devil. Because we got the fight, because you've already given us the promise. You spoke a word in our lives. You spoke a word for our life. You've given us all the liberty that we need, but we still got to fight because we can't enter in unless we please you. Touch families, touch couples, touch businesses. Tell them if things die, 
Don't let their faith die. As long as their faith is alive, they'll never be a failure. They might go through bankruptcy. They might go to court. They might be put out of a house, but as long as their faith is alive, they're not a failure. They may have lost good opportunities, but as long as their faith is alive, they're not a failure. They never will be a failure. In the name of Jesus. People of God, I want you to stand on your feet as the praise team comes. I want you to be reminded that you're not the start of the fight. The Bible says when you read it in Revelation chapter 12, uh, Revelation chapter 12, there was a war in heaven. And uh, with there being a war in heaven, that old devil has started something in heaven. You know he'll start something on earth, don't you? But he didn't just start in earth, he started in heaven. And can I tell you something, deacons? In heaven, God had to fight. I'm going to say that one more time. In heaven, deaconess, God had to fight. If God didn't fight in heaven, the devil would have took over. The favor of God is on your life, ladies and gentlemen. But you got to fight to enter into places that God has ordained. If there's a man, woman, boy, or girl, while the blood runs warm in your veins, I want to extend the opportunity today while you got the Lord so that you can come into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. You say, Pastor, I've heard the word. I need Jesus in my life. I've, I've done my own thing. But I want to get on the right road. We call it the Romans road. Jesus, Jesus, that whosoever will call on the name of the Lord Jesus, shall Jesus, be saved. Jesus, the Bible says that if thou Jesus, shalt confess with thy mouth, Jesus, that's the physical, and believe in thy heart, Jesus, Jesus, that's the spiritual, Jesus, thou shall be saved. I want to give you an opportunity in the sanctuary and at home to connect with Jesus as the Lord of your life. If you point that right hand at the flat screen, at the TV, I want you to join me in prayer that God will turn your condition from unrighteousness to righteousness. Repeat after me and say, Father, I thank you for sending Jesus to the cross to go to the grave and to get up with all power in his hands. Come into my life. I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, God has changed you from headed to darkness to walking in the marvelous light. The city of joy would be honored to be your church. I would be honored to be your online pastor. Jesus would love to be your Savior and the Holy Ghost will love to be your confidant. It's as simple as going on screen. You see it right now. You can sign up through our website, cityofjoygm.org. And there's a place there for you to become a part of this family. But we'll learn together. We'll grow together. Everybody is somebody, but most of all, Jesus, he's Lord. CLJ family, let's put our hands together for anybody who just accepted him as Lord and Savior. Jesus, Jesus, oh yeah, Jesus, let's worship with the praise team one time. Jesus, 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 He's promised that he will do. I'm excited about him, y'all. Look at somebody and tell him he'll show up. Good. At home, stand up. We're getting ready to go. Help us lift God. Come on, y'all. We give him the honor. Oh, thank you, Lord. We give you the praise.
Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for the praise. We thank you for the worship. We thank you for the word. Bless us this week with favor. Bless our families. Bless our friends. Bless our faith. Let us walk in the newness as it relates to faith. Let us fight the good fight of faith. Oh God, we know you promised it. We know you promised things, but this is the year. We want to see manifestation because we're going to please you. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the precious Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide. Now henceforth and forevermore, let every believer that loves God, somebody shout amen. Amen. If somebody asks you, what is your life's motto? Tell them from this house to their house, the joy of the Lord 